Welcome to lesson 7.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to continue our work with the vehicle property, only this time we're going to be adjusting the vehicle property dynamically through code at different times throughout the execution of our program. Uh, think about it like this. If you were drawing a scene where one person drove up in a car to pick up a second person, and the second person got in the car and then drove off, what you would have is person one would be a vehicle, would be set to have a vehicle of the car. Because as the car moves forward, you would want person one to move with him. However, person number two is not in the car, so you wouldn't want person number two being set to the car yet. The vehicle drives up, the door opens, person number two gets in and sits down. At that point, person number two should be adjusted so that his vehicle is the car. And that's really what we're talking about, is changing the vehicle property as your program executes. This is really useful when you have one object that doesn't start riding another, but then ends up moving with the object later in the scene. Or maybe you have a scene where somebody comes by and picks an object up. So let's take a look at how to adjust the vehicle property of an object on the fly here in Lesson 7.2. So here we are in Alice, and I have a new sand world opened. And what we're going to do is write a program uh, that kind of simulates an object being picked up. And we're going to need a couple objects for this, so click on Add Objects, and scroll on over to People. The first object we'll need is in the People Gallery. And we're actually going to pick up this creepy-looking disembodied left arm. So we've got the left arm in the scene. I'm going to go back to the local gallery, go to the sports object category, and let's go ahead and pick up a basketball as well. Now the basketball might be a little bit small for our scene, so let's make it a little bit bigger so the proportion is all right with the hand. And so what we want to do is simulate uh, this left hand going to the basketball, then picking it up and walking off the scene. So we need to do some pre-animation here to get the hand in the right position. Let's start by taking the left arm and having it face the basketball. The left arm will turn to face the basketball and then we'll have it move forward so that it stops just in front of the basketball. So the left arm is going to move forward and for right now let's just try 1.5 meters. So if you don't have that on your list remember you can always click on other and select 1.5. Let's see how that looks. Hand turns. And that's probably about right, though I want to back it up just a little bit. So I'm going to have it move forward, let's call it 1.3 meters. And that looks about right for me. So I've got the hand in the right place to pick up the basketball. So the next thing I'm going to do is have the left arm turn forward. And we're not quite going 0.14 revolutions, so let's let's try 0.15, or not going 0.25 revolutions, not quite doing a, a quarter turn, but 0.15 might do it for us. So I'm going to have the left arm turn forward by 0.5 revolutions. And that's probably about right, maybe a little bit further is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to change this to 0.17. See if that gets the, the palm kind of directly on the basketball, and it does. Now, if I really wanted to make this animation more complete, at this point, I would put a do together statement and have all the fingers kind of grip the basketball, but it's not going to be necessary for our example. So we've gotten the, to the point in our code right here where we would want the basketball to be picked up and carried off. But if I were to just back this animation out, so let's say um, we'll put a, just a little placeholder command in here and we'll wait for one second and then the left arm will turn back to the upright position so we'll, we'll turn it backwards by 0.17 we're just going to undo these um, this uh, turn command so since it turned forward 0.17 we'll turn it back to 0.17 that should put it upright 
and then we'll have the left arm move forward and we'll move it off screen with like a five meter move. And so the hand should go, kind of palm the basketball, wait for a second, and then get up and walk off. And that's well and good, but at the point the palm hits the basketball, we want the hand to pick the basketball up. And we can do this in code. The way we're going to do this is select the basketball and go to the properties tab and we can see that the vehicle's property is the world. Since we're not giving the basketball any commands, it's not moving. We're going to drag the vehicle property down here underneath our weight command. And we're going to set the vehicle to the left arm, and in particular, the palm of the left arm. So I'm going to select the entire palm here. And so after that one second wait, we'll see that the basketball has the vehicle set to the palm, which is now going to have the, when the palm moves and rotates back in the upright position, the basketball should go with it, symbolizing that the hand has indeed picked up the basketball. Now let's hit play and see what happens. The arm moves gets to the basketball, pause, and now the object's been picked up, and off the screen it goes. And you can see this happen live. Over here in the vehicle property, when I hit restart, the vehicle property is set to world. And mid-animation, it switches to the left arm's palm. Effectively, I can adjust vehicle properties all I want. In fact, we're going to go ahead and add one adjustment to this uh, code right here. We're going to have the basketball placed back down on the ground by the left hand. So instead of having the left hand move off the screen, I'm only going to have it move forward by one meter. So you'll notice now, once the ball is picked up, the hand will move forward one meter, but will still be on the screen. Instead of having the ball removed, let's go ahead and have the hand drop that ball where it is now. Essentially move it over one meter. To do that, we're going to do the exact same bits of code that we did up here. I'm going to ha tell the uh, left arm to turn forward by 0.17 revolutions, and I know that's right because it's the same value that I used when the ball was being picked up. Once it turns forward, I'm going to give a wait command for one second. And now I'm going to go to the basketball's vehicle properties and set it back to world. Now while it may be set to world here over in your object details panel, in the code we've since adjusted that. So this line of code is going to set the vehicle back to the world where it originally was when the program started. Then the left arm is going to turn back to the upright position, so we're going to turn the left arm backwards by 0.17 revolutions, and then have it move off the screen. So give it a move forward and let's just send it forward three meters. With this adjustment, the hand will pick up the ball, move it over one meter, then drop it back on the ground before exiting the screen. So let's watch that animation. The ball's picked up just as it was during our first simulation. But now the hand puts the basketball down and then leaves. By adjusting the vehicle property on the fly, you can really do some cool things to your animations. Uh, there's a lot of times where you're going to want two objects to interact for a little while and then stop, particularly when you have one object picking up another. You don't necessarily have to use just the left hand. If I were to have a full person object, I can treat their left arm just like I did that left hand right there and have it pick up objects. So that's how you're going to use the vehicle property and change it on the fly in your code. Simply go to the properties, find the vehicle tab, and drag it over and you'll be able to change the vehicle property as your program is running. Now that we're getting into some more advanced concepts, and not that the vehicle property is particularly difficult, but it is more advanced than simply moving objects, you'll find you'll spend a lot more time in your animations trying to tweak them and make them look more realistic. Let's go ahead and head over to the Lesson 7.2 Challenge program where we're going to have a wise man pick up a sword, then walk off the screen, and you'll see what I mean. All 
Alright, so here on the screen, uh, you can see I've recycled the castle from the last challenge program. But I've got a sword that's stuck in the grass there, and then I've got a wise man. And let's go ahead and animate him picking up the sword. So he's going to turn, and I didn't spend a lot of time with the walking animation. I, I kind of wanted to spend some time animating his arms so they swing back and forth. When he gets to the sword, he'll lean over, pick the sword up, and then walk off the screen. So I did spend quite a bit of time. Uh, ultimately, I think I probably spent about 20 or 25 minutes tweaking the pickup animation so it looked a little bit fluid, and it definitely looks a lot better than the rest. Um, when the wise man gets to the sword, I simply change the vehicle property of the sword to be the wise man's hand, and you see him carry it off. Now, you're definitely, if you're trying to make a realistic animation, have the arm swinging while he's walking, and maybe adjust some other properties to make the cape flow. But the picking up the sword, I, I was pretty happy with how that animation uh, ended up looking, but it does take a lot of work to get the hand directly on the sword without, I, I guess, what I'm trying to say, without making it look unrealistic. You could simply move the hand to the sword, but then it would come off the arm. So you have to make certain that your, your movements are all realistic, and it takes a lot of tweaking, a lot of running. Probably ran this program about 100 times before I got the animation to about where I wanted, and it's still not perfect. But your job in the challenge program for this week is to recreate a scene similar to this. Have an object on the ground, or if it's not a sword that can be sticking out of the ground, maybe something resting on a pedestal or resting on a table, and animate a character that walks up to that object and picks it up in a realistic fashion. If you can do that, you are well on your way to making some very neat programs with Alice, and it's a skill that you've, you've got to master if you want to write these higher-end Alice programs. So thank you so much for watching Lesson 7.2 in the Alice tutorial series. As always, if you have any questions or need any help, leave those questions in the comments, and I can help you through any challenges that you're facing. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.